The Scottish Government released its beaver strategy in 2022 and it outlines plans to translocate beaver populations into new areas of the country. Cairngorms National Park Authority have now announced they will be translocating beaver to the National Park and are engaging land managers and stakeholders in the process. The Farm Advisory Service is at Mill Dam, near Dunkeld, in Athol Estates, where beaver have been present for around 10 years. The Estate Ranger, Beaver Trust and Nature Scott advise how farm businesses can make space for beaver activity. The Cairngorms National Park Partnership Plan has developed uh, ambitious targets around about uh, restoring the park's freshwater um, and catchment ecosystems uh, and also looking at species recovery. Um, beavers are a key component of this uh, catchment wide approach uh, for, restoring, uh, for restoring these habitats and also um, starting the fight against climate change and also against biodiversity loss. The report that was done looking at the feasibility of, beaver, of um, beavers moving to the park, uh, also if there's enough habitat for them, what their potential uh, damming impacts would be. And, one of the key reasons that the, the park is, is keen to be involved and to be um, the, the lead partner is we want to do this um, as an exemplar of best practice of how we translocate a species that isn't in existence in an area uh, and bringing it back to that area where it's perhaps not been for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, we want to bring together organisations and individuals, um, joining up conservation, land management, um, community, the local community, research and also business interests and to get them all um, working together um, to make this a success. We need to speak to landowners and land managers about the potential mitigation techniques that we can use if there are going to be any issues. Uh, and we also need to speak to communities to make sure that they are well informed about what beaver are actually going to do on the ground. A, a big question that people ask, or one of the main questions, is where and how are beaver going to be translocated into the park? Um, in 20, early in 2022, we commissioned um, experts to go and look at the, the habitat that was available within the park that would be suitable for beavers, um, also to look at the uh, the river conditions as to whether they may be suitable for being dammed or not um, and also looking at the opportunity or the, the potential for beaver to actually naturally colonise the park because obviously in the very southern part of the park and so therefore it was decided that the spay catchment was the, the first place that we should look at translocating beaver to. We're in negotiation with landowners in those areas to get agreement for initial release sites. What we want to do is we want to focus on the, the spay, uh, make sure that the translocations there are a success, um, learn any lessons we require from how things went there, um, and only then will we go and look uh, at another catchment. So we've been looking a lot about beaver range in Scotland in particular. Um, over the last few years, we can see that the range is definitely expanding. There's a lot of highly, highly suitable habitat for beavers in Scotland. Um, and they're almost restoring themselves. They can travel great distances along water courses. And with the right circumstances, we know their range is expanding. Here's a species that's come back after an absence of 400 plus years. And we can see it, it just slots right back into the landscapes. So as beavers are restored to the landscape or, or they move into different catchments, we can see this as a species that's probably outside the living memory of a lot of us. So it's about acceptance of change and if people are willing to live alongside beavers. I think one of the key things about seeing this species restored is I think it gives land managers an opportunity to really think about how we're going to coexist with nature. So we know quite a lot about beaver habitat and where they choose to live. So they're really focused on the riparian zones. So through that, I mean, beavers will eat a wide range of plants that are in existence that live in long water. Everything from grasses, reeds, rushes, right up to trees. And we know they fell trees, um, not only to forage on, but to also um, mate some of their wider engineering habits. So for example, beavers will dam, and we know they use trees and fell trees to dam, but also to construct their shelters. So when they're making things like lodges, you will see a lot of tree felling in areas, especially where beavers first move in, uh, to construct safe shelter uh, for future breeding. And there's a lot known about beaver ecology. I mean, this is a species we've now lived alongside throughout Europe and in, in North America. Obviously two different species, but ecologically they're very similar. So from an ecological point of view, I mean beavers can do a wide diverse range of, of uh, ecological benefits. So things like re regenerating forests and woodlands for example, beaver foraging uh, opens up the canopy which in, in turn can um, create a lot of light on the woodland floor and kind of really promote be drivers of biodiversity and plant biodiversity. 
Um, we know also they can manipulate water and they do this to really kind of slow water down and uh, hold it back on the land, which we know as humans, this is something we've been doing for many centuries. We've been draining water off the land as fast as possible to try and utilize land um, for agriculture, for example. So this is a species that kind of is retracting back and restoring a lot of these natural processes. As far as I know, the beavers have been here on the estate for about 10 years, um, like lots of other places in Scotland. There's no firm dates, it's all a bit of a mystery, but certainly they've been here since about 20, 20, uh, 2012, 2013. Local reaction to beavers, I think, in the main has been reasonably positive. Um, if anything, actually, I don't hear much um, at all about them, which I would compare to any other species within the landscape. I think people are just so used to them um, that, yeah, they're not really prompting any kind of response, which I think is a positive. I think in terms of benefits of having the beavers here, um, for one, it's just an incredible wildlife sight to see. Um, for me as a ranger, it's something that's quite new to me. Uh, I certainly didn't grow up uh, in, in a landscape where there are beavers, and I think people are really excited to see them. It's, it's quite, um, it's quite awe-inspiring when you pass through this area and see the the, you know, the, the scope of uh, what the beavers do. So I think that is a really cool thing to see. I wouldn't necessarily say that there's been problems per se, um, but certainly, I guess, with, as with any other animal in the landscape, we would monitor what's going on um, and, and respond to that if we did need to. In terms of active management, uh, in the past we've utilised flow devices um, for places where beavers maybe have um, put dams in, caused um, f flooding in, in certain places. Um, and that process has actually been, been brilliant, really smooth. We've sought advice from Nature Scott and experts like Rasheen. Um, so yeah, I, while we've had to deal with it, I wouldn't say it's been an issue particularly. We're really keen to show that the approach that we're taking forward in the Spey uh, is an exemplar of best practice engaging businesses, landowners, land managers and also the general public in this translocation. Um, the beaver haven't been here for 400 years so there's no huge rush to go and do things really quickly um, but we're keen if it's going to work we want to certainly take this action forward. We clearly as an organisation are going to be taking forward a ministerial direction to increase beaver range within the National Park over the next three years and that is going to come with management responsibilities. Um, my role is to support and advise farmers, crofters, land managers on conservation value around agriculture. Beavers are going to come into that. There is a national government mitigation scheme in play uh, and that's managed by Nature Scott. We have our own resources. There's a dedicated beaver project manager, Jonathan Willett, who's also speaking on this video. There's myself as a farm advisor, and we have a freshwater ecologist, Sally McKenzie. So between the three of us, we can be reactive um, and we can respond to concerns quickly and efficiently when, when, they're, when they present themselves. You know, mitigation is part of living alongside beavers. So where there are impacts that must be mitigated, you know, where a dam, for example, can't be tolerated, it might be impacting on a septic tank or, you know, on housing or something like that. Like that. Um, it's really important to have those mitigation tools that we can use. And you can imagine something like, you know, you can see around me here evidence of impacts on trees. So, you know, these trees have been felled by beaver and um, they've either fed on them or they've taken them away to build with. You know, that's an example of an impact, which in some cases, nothing needs to be done. And um, those are the examples whereby, if possible, if you're starting to see some beaver activity on a tree, you know, that's a great point to come in and look at the mitigation. So I guess a lot of this is around, you know, being aware of what might happen and then responding to that. And I guess as you work up through that mitigation hierarchy, you might see more um, complex, you know, beaver impacts. So things like building dams. In some cases that can be quite straightforward. You might notch um, the dam and that would be carried out under license. Um, you can remove dams. Now when they're particularly new and not well established, so less than two weeks old, you can remove beaver dams without a license um, because we consider at that point that they're not a protected feature. Um, as the dams become more established, so they are older than two weeks, it's quite likely that a beaver will have built some kind of structure behind the dam. So the dam raises the water level, which allows the beaver to inhabit the area behind that. So that can be a burrow, and um, they may be breeding in that structure, or it may just be a, rest, a resting place for the beaver. 
even removing a dam, that becomes a very regular activity. That could be every evening they could build a new dam in situations like that. And that's where maybe sometimes we then move to licensing. So we might license removal of the animals. So what I would say about that is it's, you know, that's right at the top of our hierarchy. And that is the kind of the last resort, essentially. Um, you have to meet different licensing tests for that to take place. And it would be, you know, serious damage, a serious impact must be proved. Um, so it isn't something that we move to easily. We would go through all the mitigation options first, but there are situations where that is, um, you know, the appropriate response. And we have to kind of balance the interests of the public and also obviously the animal that is protected. Now, when I say beaver removal, you know, there's trapping of the animals and also lethal control. So it's not that every animal that is removed would be lethally controlled. It could be trapped and translocated to a new location as well. Um, and that's what we're obviously seeing now in Scotland, a policy to translocate animals to new catchment. If there are individuals who have concerns, you know, about beavers, if they're seeing something new um, and they're looking for advice, then, you know, please get in touch with us. I think, first of all, we have great web pages. So if you just Google Nature Scott Beaver, you will find our web pages. Um, and there are various kind of sources of information on there. So we have bits about, you know, what to expect, what you might see. We have bits about mitigation, what you can expect from the mitigation scheme. Um, we have advice specifically for land managers, so, you know, farmers, other types of landowners, um, about our licensing approach, this kind of thing. We have an email address exclusively for our team, which is beavers at nature.scot. Um, you know, please get in touch. What I would hate to think is that there are people who are either sort of suffering in silence or trying to deal with an issue and they maybe don't know exactly what they need to do. What I would say is there can be sort of many and varied situations with beavers. They can do quite unexpected things at times. And that's why it's so important to have that advice available through the mitigation scheme as well, to kind of reassure people and look at the options and work through the options.